Hello friends, Techman Pat here. Behind me I've got myself an RTX 5080, the ROG Astral from ASUS. And I wanted to start this video off a little bit differently. Yes, we're gonna talk about the specifications of the 580, some performance and some benchmarks from a, a past me, and that'll make sense in a moment. But I wanna start this video to talk about the Samsung G9 57 inch gaming monitor that's located right next to me and how the RTX 5080 unlocks its full capabilities. Let's get started by rolling the intro. Big thanks to ASUS for sending this for review. Make sure to like and subscribe and let's get started. If you are one of the people who bought a Samsung G9 57 inch monitor expecting back then to run it at 240 hertz at its native resolution, then you were very upset when you found out that your greatest and best Nvidia card, the 4090, couldn't do it and maxed out at 120 hertz. So now the 5000 series is out. This is now capable of running 240 hertz at native resolution from the moment you open the box. Of course, making sure that your monitor's firmware is up to date and the Nvidia drivers are also up to date. Ultimately, this is the first series of cards from Nvidia that can drive this monitor. And that is a really exciting thing. So this begs the question, is the 5080 going to be hitting 240 hertz on this ridiculous resolution? Well, the reality is, not in AAA games, but that's okay. If you're playing CSGO, yes, you can hit ridiculous and native resolutions with high frame rates. And for people who play those games on an ultra wide monitor, it's gonna look pretty stunning. Older games will also be able to take advantage of it. But I'm gonna point out, using the 4090 in my previous computer with a 120 hertz limit, did not bother me at all. I was barely hitting 100 frames a second on it. But I'm gonna tell you right away, if you're thinking of upgrading to the 5080 because of that, I don't think you should. If you have a Samsung G9, you probably have a 4090 or 4080, it's not going to be the groundbreaking thing that's gonna make everything better. But if you're considering the 57 inch monitor, which I absolutely love and adore, and you're looking to buy a graphics card that's going to work with it, then the 5000 series is a thumbs up from me because it works. So let's talk to the past me about those results. Okay, with that out of the way, let's talk card specifics. The ROG Astral RTX 5080 OC edition is built on Nvidia's latest Blackwell architecture, and it shows. With 16 gigabytes of GDDR7 memory and a massive boost clock thanks to ASUS's factory overclock, this card targets high-end 4K and even 8K workflows without compromises. I say targeting because without DLSS 4, your 8K render isn't going to get a playable frame rate. In real world use, ray tracing performance is noticeably improved. Cyberpunk 2077 with full RT and path tracing runs smoother than ever, especially with DLSS 4 in frame gen mode, as you can imagine. You're looking at 100 plus frames per second in 4K Ultra on most modern titles. And thermals stay well managed thanks to the triple fan actual tech 3.0 design. Again, I will say how ridiculous this card is, but the cooling is out of this world. ASUS has refined the power delivery too. Under full load, the card pulls around 380 watts, but power efficiency is better than the 4080 thanks to the new node and redesigned cores. The cooling shroud is bulky, but airflow is well optimized and fan noise rarely breaks past 35 dB under load. For creators, render times in Blender and Adobe Premiere are down significantly compared to previous gen and AI accelerated features like background masking or frame interpretation Capitulation fly on this card. The 16 gigabyte VRAM feels like a sweet spot enough for 4K video work, gaming and generative AI workloads without bottlenecking, but if you do want to push it further, you will need more VRAM, especially for AI workloads. If you're building a system that's maxed out for gaming or GPU heavy creative loads, this is a serious contender. It's not just fast, it's efficient, quiet and tuned for performance right out of the box. And so you'll never really need to water cool this card because cooling is a standout feature of the ROG RTX 5080. ASUS has equipped it with the latest triple fan actual tech 3.0 design as mentioned
mentioned, which moves a serious amount of air without sounding like a wind tunnel. The fans are larger and spin more efficiently, keeping the GPU cool over extended 4K gaming or obviously heavy rendering if that's your workload. Combined with a vapor chamber and a dense fin stack heatsink, the card maintains stable temps under load while sustaining its high boost clocks. And then despite its heavy size, the airflow is well managed and thermals never really get out of control, even in a smaller case. During testing, core temperatures hovered around the low 70s on full load, in burn-in mode, with fan noise saying, again, surprisingly quiet around 35 to 38 decibels in most cases. ASUS has tuned the fan curve pretty well. Obviously you can customize it in the software and, and idle temps are basically silent and the ramp up is actually really smooth. And in 4K gaming benchmark, it's consistently delivers 20 to 30% higher frame rates in my tests on most AAA titles. In Hogwarts Legacy, for example, the 4080 averaged around 72 frames per second at 4K Ultra with ray tracing and DLSS enabled. The 5080 pushed that to 94 frames with the same settings, smoother gameplay, fewer dips, and of course, lower latency with DLSS 4.0 frame generation. In Cyberpunk 2077, running RT Overdrive, the 4080 struggled to stay above 60 frames at native 4K, often relying heavily on DLSS is three. Now the 5080 holds a more stable 80 frames per second with frame generation on and it feels far more fluid. It's not just raw power increases. The new Blackwell architecture delivers better frame pacing and improved AI driven upscaling. I for one welcome our new AI overlords with their fake frames, though I know some people won't like it at the end of the day, it is a smoother gameplay and you gotta be really pixel peeping to see the issues. The 4080 was a powerhouse, but the 5080 finds every edge. It's cooler under sustained load thanks to Asus's upgraded cooling and better silicon efficiency. And the performance per watt is noticeably improved, or at least on paper. You get more performance for the same or even slightly less power draw in real world scenarios. If you're on a 4080, the upgrade depends on your workload. I probably would not recommend it. For 4K gamers chasing ultra settings and creators working in real-time 3D or AI pipelines, the 5080 offers fair improvement as it is tradition with next generation launches. For anyone on a 30 series card or below, the 5080 is a massive jump forward and that's the point where you say, go for it. I've always had the rule, never go up one generation, always try and skip the one, but you know, people do what they do. As a note, the card uses a single 16 pin 12 VH PVR connector. It comes with an adapter that splits it out to three eight pin plugs. For cleaner power with reduced cable clutter, you'll want to ensure your PSU is ATX 3.0 compliant, or like me, you'll need to use the included adapter for stable performance. And the included SAG booster, because again, this card is ridiculously big, is a requirement in setups where the card is horizontal. At around 3,499 Australian dollar ruse, the ASUS ROG Hestral RTX 5080 OC Edition costs as much as a decent used car, or at least a very sketchy one with questionable tires. It's a steep price, no doubt, but you're paying for bleeding edge performance, refined cooling, and future ready features packed into a single GPU. Not future proofed, but future ready. So you may be wondering why card prices have been so high since the 3090. In fact, well, it's a mix of many factors. Rising silicon prices, more complex chip designs, added AI processing cores and premium cooling systems all drive up production expenses. And Nvidia is definitely not to blame. On top of that, demand from both gamers and creators hasn't slowed, so the market sets the bar quite high. It's painful on the wall, so if you want top tier performance in 2025, this is unfortunately the new normal. Don't get me wrong, again, it's not a good normal, it's just the new normal. All up, the ASUS ROG Astral RTX 5080 OC Edition delivers what you'd expect from next gen flagships, raw performance, refined cooling, and specs higher than the other versions. Thanks for watching, make sure you like and subscribe. Big thanks to ASUS for sending the card for review. Make sure to stay tuned for the next one. Bye.